On behalf of my colleagues, thank you for allowing me to present our research, the qualitative analysis of the transition and learning needs of frontline refinery leaders. The research took place at a single focal organization, which sought to solve a problem of practice around leadership selection where there was not much data and limited research resources. The focal organization has asked to not be identified, so I will be referring to them using a pseudonym, Sabine Refining. Sabine Refining is a downstream oil, gas, and logistics company which operates a single principal refinery in Southeast Texas in the United States with a total of 2,300 employees. Because they play such a core role in leading the refinery, identifying and selecting leaders is a key element to sustaining the organization's success into the future, and that's why identifying and selecting leaders is so important to this and many other organizations. The organization is seeking to improve the practices by which they identify and select leaders. The organization reports that there is an overall low interest from operational staff to step into the frontline leader role, and of those who are interested, there are mixed results of getting those to actually convert and transition into the leadership positions. The literature review informed the conceptual framework, which includes identity-based leader development, the zone of proximal development, and the leadership experience framework. Identity-based leader development informs what changes, how does it change, and what conditions matter with how leaders become leaders. Vygotsky's zone of proximal development helps inform which tools and relationships with knowledgeable others are necessary for becoming a leader, and finally, knowing that some experiences are more powerful in building leaders than others, McCall's leadership experience framework will help define which experiences are important to transform these candidates into leaders. A qualitative case approach was used, as this approach is best when understanding how a culture sharing group operates. Content analysis and qualitative semi-structured interviews of six frontline supervisors and three HR staff who were familiar with the process or went through the process were conducted. This research design allowed for the creation of a rich, in-depth understanding of the lived experiences of those in the current system to explain how does the identification and selection of frontline leaders take place at the organization, to what extent does the frontline leader identification selection process impact the identity transition process, what are the salient experiences, relationships, and tools that contributed to the formation of the frontline leader identity? And lastly, at what point in the identity transition process did the individuals identify as a frontline leader? We made the following recommendations to the organization, aligned with the aims, the research goals, and the organization's aims in relation to frontline leader selection, identification, and development. Additional identification and selection sources beyond the current supervisor are needed to create a wider, more diverse candidate pool. This would allow for additional interested candidates to come forward and subject the process to less unintended bias. Second, a key reason that was brought up as a barrier for identifying and selecting leaders was that the organization needs to address the loss of earnings potential and potential of job loss by becoming a frontline leader. In analyzing why individuals felt this way, it may be due to the loss of overtime pay, which reduces the overall take-home pay of those who take on these positions. This real or perceived issue should be addressed openly by the organization. The fear of job loss was attributed to frontline leaders having to leave the union to become leaders, which meant that they would lose protections in the event of a downturn or other organization changes. Third, more formalized and explicit transition, support, and development structures are needed to bridge the gap between selection and placement in roles. Taking on a new identity is tough enough, but not providing the tools, resources, and access to knowledgeable others in a formalized and deliberate way leaves the success of those trying to become frontline leaders up to chance. Finally, transition points should be formalized and transition tools should be codified. A specific off-site training, which included an interactive teaming activity which used a sailboat, was mentioned by all six, so 100% of the frontline leader participants as an important experience. This experience could have represented and signaled a formal rite of passage that you are becoming a new frontline leader in the organization. Additional practical examples and recommendations of each of these findings are referenced in the full article. Thank you very much for allowing me to present this research. I look forward to answering your questions and discussing this more with you at the conference.